Hello and welcome to Homebrew Adventures, the RPG show where we take wannabe adventurers and take them through a one-shot adventure created by you, the listener. I am your dungeon master, Corey Keller. Join me every episode where I take our group of heroes who like to dungeons and sometimes dragons, and we will see if they survive. Do they have what it takes? Is your adventure challenging? Let's find out on Homebrew Adventures. <laughs> Previously on Homebrew Adventures. You're a good mom. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You're a good mom. Um, she's looking weaker and weaker by the minute. I, I caress her face, tell her it's gonna be okay, and slit her throat. Uh. <laughs> tell me everything. Look, we, we, we just... We just do what she tells us to do, okay? Who? Uh, Talina never lies. Who tells you? Talina. She tells us. How does she tell you? To, she told us to do this. She said there needed to be a cleansing. Who? See if she brings you back from this, and I throw the halfling in there and close the portal. I'm so, I'm sorry, but you guys have just been infected with sight rot disease. Oh, okay. You still hear the noise of everyone behind you kind of searching around, but you, as you, you know, you kind of cut that vine off, uh, you hear some noise coming from down below. These vines kind of go through uh, the floor. Um, they kind of work their way in. You kind of hear voices, and as you peek down through the vines, uh, you can see that they spread as you p- kind of poke your head down to look. You see they kind of spread out, uh, and they, they dig deep into the earth below. You see that these roots kind of run deep, and down there you see about six or seven of these cultists all with these bowls of the black ooze again as they are cutting open the roots and starting to pour the black liquid into the roots of this tree and these vines. And you are just able to see as this black liquid kind of starts to come back up through the trees and you see that it's starting to kill uh, the the nature, these vines. They're starting to blacken as you see that it kind of starts to spread and make its way out the doors as you follow the trail of the vines uh, and you see that it is heading to the forest. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Homebrew Adventures, where we try to figure out what the heck is going on in this forest kingdom. Um, uh, Last week we left you with a little bit of a cliffhanger, so let's see if everyone can figure out what's going on this episode. Uh, Once again, thanks for joining in, whether you're listening through iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those wonderful things. We're just glad you're here, and we are ready to jump on in, so that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so... Farak, you just uh, cut uh, a vine off as you were kind of going down through and looking down this tunnel in this uh, this stronghold that you guys found yourself in, or makeshift temple, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as you were cutting that vine, you looked down and you saw uh, four or five uh, cultists down there cutting the roots of this tree uh, that was kind of going up through the floor, because they're on the floor down below you guys. And you see that they're starting to pour that black liquid, and you see that black liquid just coursing through the tree, and it's going up the vines past you, and you see it going out and just following and making its way out the building. What do you do? Oh, yeah, Varrock, what do you do? Gosh, Um, well, I convey that to everybody, and I draw them over to come look at it. Um, well, I look at it. I'm wondering, what in tarnation. <laughs> do we want to go down there, or do we want to follow it out towards the forest? I say we go down. I say we go down there. How we many people did you them? see? Um, if someone wants to roll an investigation check, you can look look more into it. I have a negative one, so how about somebody else do that? Yeah, um, I got. I rolled I got a fifteen, on, and I got a nine. Okay. Um, so if Rocky don't see anything other than what you conveyed to them, yeah. Um, Johnny, you see uh, as Varrock kind of tells you about this, you kind of peek over the edge. Uh, you guys are kind of keeping back. You see them all uh, 
you know, doing their thing, cutting into the roots uh, and just kind of feeding the liquid into it. Um, you see a doorway behind them. So you see about, like I said, four or five guys down there. Um, this room is kind of collapsed down there as well, but this tree seems to be pretty strong with all the vines and roots coming out of it. Uh, but you do see a doorway behind these guys with some light coming from it. Uh, it's more of a brighter light kind of shining down there with something on a fire. Um, you notice that it's, it's almost like a brew. Uh, mm. Yeah, almost like a witch's brew. Uh, but this stuff is kind of shining kind of a goldish color, not like the black stuff that you have been normally seeing. But they are still pouring the black stuff into the tree. But as you kind of look through this doorway past them, you see more of this gold liquid coming from this giant pot. <clears throat> What do y'all want to do? Do we want to do we want to be sneaky, or do we just want to like go for it? Uh, I'm down for either. Um, either sounds appealing. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, Brock? I'm not sure what we can do sneakily, like what we can really accomplish <laughs> that way. <laughs> so I think we go for it. Cha 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 cha. Okay, yeah. All right, you guys can just jump into battle. Hey, stop right there! <laughs> Good one. Well, she. Uh, Good she one. No, no, no. I'm saying no, we no. could. No, okay. <laughs> hold on, right there. I said we could. I was, I was just, you know, playing the part. All right, part. this is this is a yellow card. A, a ref's it? warning right now. Anytime you just say something without saying out of character, I felt I'm like, gonna assume you're I saying it. I felt like my what tone it, was you, indicating you, me you, being like, "This is what we should say." Guys. You could, you could, <laughs> you, know? you could just have a character voice. That's true. Anyways, I, yellow card. I could say stop in the name of love, but you know, I'm not going to do that either. So, anybody else got any hot ideas? Um, all right, so there's like no way we could... It, they're just down this hall. Can we get to the, the golden bucket? Uh, <laughs> the golden bucket. Well, okay, so what you see from your guys' vantage point, um, it's still a pretty crumbled mess where you're at. Um, you can literally ride the roots or in the tree down to them because it leads down there. Uh, it's kind of this weird slant. It's not like straight up. It's kind of this weird slant to where it's uh, like you could literally walk down this. Um, there is another platform across, but that's like a 40, 50 foot gap uh, to get down further down the hallway because this is like kind of crumbled in. Um, so really the only way down there would be to either go down this tree or see if you can, you know, repel your way down some other way. But the gap is about a 40, 50 foot gap uh, to get to the other side. Um, but other than that, I don't know if you know any other doorways to get in there. Because uh, this is a bottom floor that you're looking into. And you guys are on about the middle floor. Should we just slide down her? Slide down her. <laughs> uh, will we get infected by sliding down? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can I do a? Can I do? Can we just? Hey, can we just go? Can we just go back? Like, is this the same way we came out, or is this the rubble on top? You you mean you go back down the stairs where you guys came from? Yeah. Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, you can totally go back down the stairs. Why don't we do that? Is that so? Is that where they are? Well, they're on the floor below you guys, so they're from that floor that you guys were originally at. It's just a matter of finding out where on that floor. Um, I will follow the lead of somebody else. <laughs> hmm. I'm wondering if if we can see them right now through this thing. Should we try and like shoot an arrow down this hole? Oh yeah, maybe because we'd have advantage. Yeah, we definitely have a surprise attack on them for sure. <laughs> okay, now we'll. Look. Somebody with one of those things should try I, that. <laughs> I have a pretty good attack yeah. bonus for my longbow. All right. Is that what we're in? I have a, like, I have a, are we all yeah. in agreement? I can shoot my crossbow as well, so yeah. Yeah. Two of us shoot? Yeah. Don't you have Dude, so Just setting this up, there is five of them down there. Three of them are kneeling at the roots of the tree, cutting into it. Two of them are loading the bulls up from these like uh, makeshift casks that they have. Um, so the two that are loading it have their backs turned, and there's three on their knees at the roots. All right. I kind of want to shoot Let's, the one on their knees. Yeah, Brock, <laughs> do you do you have a javelin? 
I have a longbow. I mean, oh, I do have a javelin. Why don't we all just pick yeah. one and take a shot? We have advantage. So okay. let's do it. All three of us. All right, I pick the middle one. Um, I'll just take one of the ones on their knees. I don't care. So all three on the knees? Yes. Is yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so all three of you roll me an attack with advantage. All right, 15 Whoa. plus nine. Ow. Ooh, Lauren got a nat 20. Hey. Oh, oh, 20 nice. Plus nine. nice. I got so, a... Booyah. I got a 19. I got a 15. Uh, you all definitely hit. Yes. yes. All right, so let's go ahead and all roll me damage real quick. Uh, Lauren, you're going to roll double damage. <laughs> nice. And I get... I got five. Uh, I get sneak attack. True. Ooh. Ooh. 10 points of damage. Um, I got um, seven. And I got seven five. doubles. Oh, no. I yeah, you rolled twice. Double. Okay, so. Nine, 10. Okay. So Lauren got 10 and Brock got five. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, buddy. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, yeah, you. Uh, so they're all kneeling down, doing their deal, you know, just. You know, just cutting into a tree, pouring some black liquid in there, and it's just a typical day. Um, and then out of nowhere, an arrow from, um, my, I just forgot your name, Turk. <laughs> an arrow from Turk just goes and splits right through her, her target, um, just like clean through just nastiness, just sharp as an arrow. <laughs> uh, and then you see a uh, arrow from Johnny's uh, just come straight down, hit the guy in the middle, same thing, just clean kill. Both those guys are done. The javelin uh, from Varrock comes down uh, as it stabs through the shoulder of his guy, but it was a hard enough toss that it actually sticks into the ground, and he has the guy pinned to the ground Ooh, through the shoulder. Nice. Um, and so that was a surprise attack. Um, and as the third one that got hit with the uh, javelin lets out a grunt, the other two turn around uh, and they start looking around, but they don't know exactly where it's coming from at the moment, but they, are uh, they're really confused. Are we able to step back out of view since we're like above them? Yeah, you guys have cover. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So they start to look around um, and as they start looking confused, one of them turns to run through those doors. Can, Can uh, we attack we again? Heck yeah, why not? Okay, let's I, do I, it. I do that. All three of oh, us. We're rolling. Yeah, let's I'm do giving it. You an extra. I'm giving you a freebie. Uh, ten plus nine. Do, do we have advantage on this one as well? Because he doesn't see uh, us. You, you do have advantage on this one as well. Oh, shoot. Woo. <clears throat> Fourteen. Okay. Um, twenty-four. Uh, yes. Did you say four? Twenty-four. <laughs> all right, so twenty-four. Uh, yeah, you all definitely hit. Uh, oh, roll yes. that damage. Eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, f 14. 14. Oh, dang. Wow. What? Sneak attack. Um, Boom. Yeah, Boom. so as the one runs through the door, he gets shot in the back and just falls to his legs right in the doorway, just face first, <laughs> life out of his body. The other cultist falls into the pit, or the pit, into the makeshift cask of the stuff that they were getting the, the, the black goo out of. Uh, yes. And just knocks that over and just gets completely covered in it. And he is also dead from the arrow. You guys just took out all five of these dudes. Uh, but you start to hear noise coming from the the doorway that leads to that other room as they see their cultist friend fall to the ground in the doorway. You don't know how many are in there, but you do hear a noise coming from in there. Hmm. This is like shooting fish in a barrel. I'd say we just <laughs> stay here. See we what happens. What? I think we just stay here and keep shooting them. Okay, yeah, we get to see if they come out. I'm good with sniping. Um, no one is coming out. Let's wait a little longer. <laughs> Can I <laughs> scream into the hole? Like scream into the hole? Gross. <laughs> like, like make a sound. <laughs> make a sound. No, but, scream into the hole. Well, yeah, in, like, into the hole, but like put my mouth <laughs> on the hole so that when I scream, it sounds like it's coming from the room beneath us. <laughs> no, do that again. Exactly. Oh, I see. You want to try to like make them think it's from downstairs. What is this? Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. What do you yell? Um. Uh, <laughs> um. Shoot, <laughs> didn't think about that one. Um. <laughs> I just yell, oh, crap. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> to make him think uh, that you hear there's one inside, more alive. Inside the room, you hear, uh, what's going on out there? Are you okay? Yeah, right. come here. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, go now. There's arrows shooting down. What's going on? No, we got him. Come here, quick. <laughs> <laughs> one guy, one guy kind of like, Pokes his head, trying to like see around the corner, like slowly. Can I shoot him? <laughs> Can we see him? Sure, take a sh- sure take a shot at him. Seven plus nine is, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, it hits. Yes. <laughs> That'll teach you to whip your head out of the, <laughs> out of the hole. <laughs> oh, eight plus three. <laughs> you shoot the arrow right between the eyes. <laughs> This guy's poking his head out to see what's going on. Just thunk. Right between the eyes. And he is down. Good. Good job. Right, yeah. And you hear two more vo- you hear two more voices coming from inside that room saying, I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah, come on out. Uh, um, and you hear you hear what sounds like footsteps running in the opposite direction, probably on the other um, end of that room that they're in. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. That was good. Uh, can we tie? Can we tie a rope? Or like, can we just go down the the incline back into the room? Yeah, you can take yeah. an incline down. Let's do that. Like that tree is at an angle to where you can like basically hop on and kind of like work your way down. All right, I, I do that. All right, Johnny plunges into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I I follow, I follow him into the hole. <laughs> I make it a threesome. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I was waiting for one of bada those. Bing, bada bing, bada bing. So all three of you fit in the hole and you get down there. Ew. <laughs> this this podcast is going south fast. Yep. <laughs> I'm just really glad you didn't say this podcast is going down. <laughs> down hole. Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> all three of you are down. Um and uh yeah, so as you get to the ground floor of this new room that you have found. Uh, like I said, you just see the the base of this tree and like vines set up. Uh, this room is also pretty crumbled. The only way in was that door. Um, but this tree is starting to get blacker and blacker by the second, and it's starting to look nasty um, uh, to where you can physically see it starting to uh, break apart at some areas. Um, and you see the five cultists all dead and the sixth one that was shot between the eyes. Um, you see, like I said, more cask of the black nastiness. Um, and as you look into the other room now, you get more of a clear view. Uh, it also looks like a ceremonial room, like a very, very small version of the one you guys first ended up in. Uh, but this one, there's no bodies on the table. Um, there is a bunch of vials, um, laid up on like a shelf in there. Uh, and you see that big pot of gold liquid. Uh, being uh, where it was being mixed, now just sitting empty in the center of the room. Before we go in there, um, which we probably will, um, can I use my uh, great axe to kind of slice the uh, limbs from like the tree? Okay, yeah. So I'll try and like make it, I don't know. You just want to cut some sections off? Well, like at the bottom. So you said it's like feeding into something that's... Well, it's already going up through, like it's already gone up and out the building now. But if I slice it like uh, at the bottom, would it discontinue it soaking in more? Oh, you could sure try, but it's a pretty wide tree. It's going to take you a long time to actually like cut this thing. Why don't we try? That's why they call it a great axe. I don't know. (laughs) What were you gonna say? Uh, I was gonna say, why don't we try pouring the uh, the gold liquid on the tree to see? I'll be like, uh, hey, Barack, oh, yeah. Barack, why don't you go take a look at that uh, that gold <laughs> that gold liquid and uh, uh-huh. and see kind of if that if that's like what what it was that you uh, you drank. If it's it seems similar. Uh, and uh, so while he are you gonna go do that? 
Yeah, I'll go check that out. Okay, so while he's doing that, that, while he's doing that, and we're slicing at the tree, I loot all of the dead cultists. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you are, so you're letting uh, Turk kind of chop away. You're like, yeah, yeah. You start helping her a little bit, but you kind of like make your way through the bodies yep. as you go around the tree. Yep. Um, yeah. So inside their their cloaks, you just see a bunch of vials of the black stuff. Um, you see a couple vials each of the gold stuff uh, in their underneath their cloaks as well, um, but they have nothing of monetary value. Or uh, I mean, they have a few of them have some daggers, like some I, more of those sacrificial I, daggers. I take a dagger to replace the one I gave to the gave kid. Out. Yeah, it's not as cool as Creevy's, but uh, it is a. Uh, Dang it! I should have kept his. It's it's a sacrificial. Yep, <laughs> it's a sacrificial dagger. All, All right, right. Uh, Varak. So as you you said, you're going to make your way to that gold stuff, right? Um. Yes. After let it be known, I gather up my two javelins that I threw, or three. <laughs> okay. Um. I gather those, Perfect. and then I'm gonna roll an investigation check on the gold stuff. Absolutely. See, <laughs> that's just a thirteen to see if it's what I was drinking before or what it is. Absolutely. So, uh, as you kind of get up to this gold stuff, it's pretty potent. Um, but you do recognize a similar smell. Uh, to the stuff that was given to you by old crazy old coot. Um, you do notice that smell kind of brings back that moment um, from that time. Hey, homebrewers, guess what time it is? It's time for me to talk and break up your podcast. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing great. Thanks again so much for tuning in and listening to another episode of us just talking and trying to figure things out. Um, this is going to be the first part of the finale. Uh, when we recorded, it went kind of long, so we had to split it up into two episodes. So this will be part one of the finale, and then part two will be uploaded on October 10th. Uh, that'll be the next uh, scheduled release date. Um, but yeah, we're excited to bring this to a conclusion. Hopefully we wrap it up nicely for you. Hopefully you all enjoyed this arc of Plague of the Forest Kingdom. And remember, if you enjoyed this arc, you can go to DMs Guild and download it for yourselves to run for your own group. And thanks to Mark Cunningham for actually letting us use this on the podcast. Uh, he is the creator of Plague of the Forest Kingdom, and we have enjoyed running it. Um, yeah, so October 10th will be the part two of the finale where we actually wrap it all up. And uh, let's just say things get interesting. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, uh, once again, just thanks for everyone that's been sharing this podcast, uh, leaving us reviews on iTunes. So if you haven't done that yet, please head over to iTunes and just leave us a nice little note saying how much you enjoy the podcast or don't enjoy the podcast. Either way, we love hearing from you. Thanks to everyone that's been hitting us up on Twitter, uh, Instagram. We love interacting with all of you guys, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. And uh, you guys are the reason that we love doing this podcast and keep it going. All right, let's talk about uh, some ads. This episode is brought to you by Critical Dice. They are the official dice sponsor of Homebrew Adventures, and we absolutely love using their dice. Uh, you've already heard us on the show laughing and joking about how many times we roll a no. And if you don't know what that is, they have an amazing D20 set where on the one it says no instead of a one. It just makes for a great time when you're playing and you just keep rolling those no's. And it's a blast. So if you just head over to thecriticaldice.com, uh, you can check out their full range of dice sets. They have everything from dice sets to books to a D20 ring, which is pretty awesome. But there's just a lot of cool stuff on their site. And if you go to uh, thecriticaldice.com and buy yourself a set of dice at checkout, if you type in homebrew, you get a nice little discount uh, on us. So go support them. Thank you, The Critical Dice, for being our dice sponsor on the show. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy their dice sets because they are amazing. All right, that's it for sponsors this week. Um, we are going to get back to the episode, and I hope you all enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you on October 10th. Hey, guys, I think this is it. Mm. Is it that stuff? <laughs> 
I think let's, it's uh, stuff. <laughs> let's uh let's go ahead and pour some on the uh, tree. See what uh, see what happens. So is there like a is there a I mean, ladle? They're pouring. Yeah, is there a ladle in? <laughs> yes. There? <laughs> uh, yes, there is ladle. This is the uh, the bottling room, basically. Okay. Yeah. So you find some stuff to kind of carry. Uh, so do you pour it at the base of the tree? Is that what you guys are doing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As you basically as you pour at the base of this tree, where the liquid hits, it starts to soak into the roots, um, and you notice that as it starts to soak into the roots. Uh, a lot of that blackness starts to fade away to a really deep, dark brown. But unfortunately, where the blackness had already hit, it's already killed the tree. Um, and basically, it already infected it and killed it, but it removed that blackness and that, uh, the poison that was in it, and it brings the tree back to what its natural color would have been, Aww. but a little bit more dead. Sad tree. So is, is the tree dead, or... Is it like just kind of, is like all of it dead or just part of it dead? Part of it dead. It hasn't completely, okay. since it's pretty thick, but they were, they'd been pouring for a while. Um, so it took a long while, but it was enough to saturate it enough to where a lot of it is dead or dying. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty bad off. Um, but this, the, as you pour that, like I said, as you pour that gold liquid, it starts to remove a lot of that blackness. Um, but it doesn't move through the trees as fast as that blackness did. Um, so it's gonna, it looks like it might take a lot to get rid of what they had already poured in. Okay. But, but it's enough for us to know that this gold stuff is the good, good stuff. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's that sweet, right. sweet elixir. Mystery solved. <laughs> so uh, the episode's over. <laughs> Oh. Uh, so, I mean, we got to find like, because here's like, I, none of this makes sense. Like, what's their end game here? Like, originally, I thought it was to, like bringing back the the fire knives or flame daggers or fire daggers or what. I think we have to find Talonite and see. I, here's, I don't think it is Talonite. Like, I think it's like somebody, some dude who's just like messing with these folks, like some bad juju <laughs> necromancer. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I think we we definitely need to find somebody. Yeah. And teach him a lesson. Like, <laughs> let's. Yeah. So let's save. I take some of the vials and I like give each. I give each us one. Um, okay. Just in case. Um, I'm like hide this and. You I know. take. I take two. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take two more. Do, <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna need. I've got, more right. I've got a history with this stuff. All right, so we all and... have a camel back full of this golden liquid. Uh, there you just, go. Um, and do uh, we need to heal this tree? Because I, do you think this tree is like feeding into the town or something? I, I feel like that's it was getting people sick. I think it's initially. just a source that they're taking it from. So I think as long as they're not getting it from there anymore, I think it's fine. I think we need to find the person in charge to stop all of it. Yeah, definitely. I just didn't know if we needed to like heal the tree <laughs> first. <laughs> well, here's my oh, here's no. like it, it did it seem like it, the poison was still spreading? Um, so it was still spreading, but as you poured the gold stuff on, it slowed it down. Because you poured it at the base. All right, so if we pour it above where it's spread to, it should stop it, yeah? I don't know. I he mean, said we'd have to pour a lot on it, so if we all just go get a bucket each. <laughs> how much is in the cauldron? Try is there it. like, is it like a 55-gallon drum? It's a, it's a really big cauldron. Okay, well then let's take a good chunk and pour, throw some on the tree. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Do you want to do exactly how much are you wanting to put on it? Uh, uh you want to do half? I don't half? know. Half? I'm just thinking like how many people might be sick already, and if we kill, like, if we kill the people making it, like, I don't know, are we gonna oh, be able to heal them? Yeah. You know what I mean? So okay. I say two gallons. Two gallons. Okay. So yeah, as you pour two more gallons at the base of this tree, um, the Kind of the same thing happens how it started to clear up the blackness. It starts to suck up 
a lot more of the blackness and you see more of the gold going up through the vines following where the black stuff led originally ah. um, and it's starting to clear it up but the same thing is it's just leaving the dead tree in the wake because the poison had already been there long enough to start killing the tree but it is stopping it from spreading so here's the thing like if we do this with people the people are going to be dead already it sounds like sounds like um, it um and but you and we, but you yourself them in Barack, a have drank this twice now he wasn't he wasn't already like fully turned yet Fully turned. He, he, was, he was pretty bad off. Neither this tree isn't <laughs> he either. Wasn't turned. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This tree isn't either. Yeah. I don't know. I think it is, but I don't know. All it's right. So we're gonna we just think murder that, everyone who's sick. Do we think we need to go to the source of where this is coming from? Like follow where the tree, like follow it to where it's coming from out in the forest. Um. You start. You all start to hear voices coming further oh, from another opposite door in this room. Uh, it still seems a pretty far off, but it's a large commotion of what a lot more voices starting to run in y'all's direction. Well, maybe this is who we need to talk to. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Who knows? Is it, are they coming from where old dude got poked his head through the door? <laughs> well... Well, yeah, so in that room where the cauldron was is where he poked his head out, mm -hmm. but there was someone else who said, I'm getting out of here, and he ran out an opposite door that leads to the other side of that room, but further down in the building, in a place you guys haven't been through yet because you're in some new rooms, you hear voices coming from way down there um, heading as they're getting louder, what sounds to be like multiple, multiple people. Let's just go for it. So Let's... we need to bounce. Or we... You know, show them what's up. <laughs> I say we, I say we head toward them. Yeah, I kind of want to too. All right, let's do it. Like, <laughs> like, let's run like weapons drawn, and like make it like an intimidation kind of thing. Okay. Ooh, I have good intimidation too. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you guys are gonna just run out full war cry, weapons drawn. Yeah. Yep. I want a little, okay, little yeah. bit of crackle of, of lightning in my nostrils. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as you, uh, so as the three of you just weapons drawn, screams blazing, head out this door. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, a passage of doorways and tunnels that kind of go through here, but you just make your way in the direction of the, of the yells and stuff, voices coming. Uh, and as you turn down a corridor, you see another long, what seems to be hallway, because whoever built this place loved hallways and doorways. <laughs> uh, but you see down there seem to be about 30 cultists, all wearing cloaks and sacrificial daggers drawn, heading straight at you now. How oh, wide awesome. is the hallway? Uh, the hallway is about 20 feet wide. Um, so it's not huge, but it's not small. You know, um, yeah, but you see about what seems to be about 30 cultists and how, your way. how it seems it seems like they went and warned pretty much all available men okay how do we uh, really want to fight 30 uh, where else can we go uh, i mean what do you got johnny well what i got is how uh, how uh like how deep are they like how how oh th right now they're about a hundred feet ahead of you. I know, but like the way. group. So how how distance is closing? All right, what's their what's their dimensions as a group? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Thirty of them, say three by three. Three by three. Okay. What you got cooking? Hopefully some cultists, because we took a short rest, which brought my breath weapon back. Ooh. So I got it back. Cool. All right, so what I'm saying is, like, we're running at them, doing an intimidation check, and when I get close enough, I shoot my breath weapon at all of them, trying to kill as many as I can. Okay. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys think? Whatever you guys want to do. Um, like, cause I'm, I'm remembering Johnny still like hates these people. Right. So like. He probably is going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to murder everyone. You guys can bounce if you want, but I've had worse. 
Like, so. How many do you think you could take out? With my breath, my breath weapon. Um, yeah. potentially foot by thirty foot line. Yeah, I could potentially take out. I could take out. Yeah, about half of them. That sounds great, but I can't. We can't kill fifteen of them after either. Yes, we can. If can here's we? the thing, if I kill, if we do an intimidation check with this, and I kill fifteen of them, like uh, I kind of want to try it because it'll make for a good podcast. Or you could all die. Or, or all we die. all die. <laughs> So uh, just so you know, they're closing they're, the gap. Yeah, they're they're getting closer. All right, I, so I, either... I, I run at them. You guys can do what you want. I ah! I run at them, and I scream. Um, I, for Narnia. I scream. <laughs> I, I scream for uh, what was what was the boy's name? Gregory. Gregory. Oh uh, no, it was Peter. I thought. Gregory was the guy that died, right? Peter was. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Peter. All right, yeah. So Peter I shout. I shout for Peter. That sounds really bad. Um, <laughs> and, All right, uh, so you shout, for Peter. And so when I get close enough, like I want to be like real close on him. I'm like rushing in. Um, and uh, Oh, gosh. Okay. I, yeah, you're going to have to be within like five feet of him if you want to try to take out 15. Look, I want to get, I want to be like, yeah, right on them. All right, so roll your intimidation check for your for Peter. For Peter, <laughs> trying to. All right, that's a twelve. Do I get any bonuses? Because oh, I'm like, because I'm like running at yeah, them. Yeah, okay. Here's the thing. I think he Maybe needs the, an inspiration. The point first too. guy up front is is a little shaky, like the front front line. But <laughs> also, when they have thirty of them together, they're a little bit more uh more pumped up on adrenaline. But it's still. A, they're still coming, but the front line's a little more shaky. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna collide with them. So, all right, so it's safe right. to say that front line's a little shaky, meaning the front line's not moving as fast. So they've bunched up a little bit more, yeah. A little bit more. Okay, yes. so I could get like maybe an extra row. We'll see. All right. Uh, all right. So you. Okay. So John, first of all, before you guys collide, Varrock and Turk, what are you doing? Oh, I don't know. Apparently, this is going down. <laughs> I guess it is. I guess I'm readying my sword and just start praying. All right. You're a barbarian. You can rage. Like, yeah. you can do some crazy stuff. Like, I, I have, like, start raging. All right. So, you're into rage now. Yeah. Barman. <laughs> <Rawr. Bear> <laughs> All right. And I have good intimidation, too. So, hopefully. So it would have been real nice if you'd ran with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was I didn't know what to do. All right, so are you guys coming up now then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so All right. I run and I'm like yar. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you want me to roll for intimidation? Uh, <laughs> with, <sure>. yar. <laughs> with yar. <laughs> with yar. <laughs> 12 plus 5. I thought you had low intimidation. No. I have low investigation. Oh, uh, that's what it Different. is. All right. Yeah. Um, the second row slows down a little bit, but they're still coming. All right. So they're bunched up a little more. There so, you go. Yeah, uh, so you're running down behind Johnny, right? Johnny's already way in front of you, though. But you're running down, too? I run but I get to a distance where I can still use my longbow. Oh, then you're probably going to have to stop then. Okay. okay. And then Vrock's in a rage, and he's just getting ready to yeah. start whacking if he needs to. Okay, uh, <laughs> Johnny, go ahead. and So you're doing your breath weapon, mm -hmm. so I have to make a dex save. Yep. Let me pull up their stats um, here. I think it's a negative four to their dex. They, get, <laughs> they don't get a negative four to their dex? Yeah, what's their dex? Their dex is plus one. Haha, <laughs> you told me what their dex is. Oh, crap. I just told you what their dex is. <laughs> how, how many hit uh, points do they have? No. <laughs> Ooh. Lauren saw this, too. Uh, That's 18 plus 1, so 19. All right. I'm going to roll damage. Yep. They take half of it. So they take five points of damage. All right. So let me write out 30 guys. <laughs> 
Are you and kidding me? 15 of them take five points of damage. So they, uh, they feel a little spark. Uh, it gives them a little tingling sensation where it burns them a little bit. They smell a little bit. They, they, they wince in a little bit of pain. Uh, they kind of stop, but they are now just all stopped, kind of like, what the heck just what happened? Uh, the front line of the front 15, like, yeah, they're five points down, but they're still feeling good. Let's roll for initiative. Hold on. It's more than the front. I get how many? Did I get 15 of them are down five? Yes. Okay. Uh, seven. Twelve. Two. <laughs> We're all gonna die. I think you're all gonna die here. You're very weird looking yeah. figures. Uh, Turk, what'd you roll? Uh, seven. <laughs> all right, Johnny, you are up. So here's the situation: you are all in the middle of a hallway. Mm -hmm. You got about fifty feet behind you, uh, to that door you guys were at. There's about fifty feet behind the cultists to where they came from, and Johnny, you are face to face with thirty guys. What do you do? Um, I... And unfortunately, you can't use your breath weapon again. No, that's fine. Um, I am going to... Can I ask a, a logistics question? Okay. The, our guardians ring, since I've already established that I can use them to send other people elsewhere. Do, like... On an X Y axis, does it always have to be vertical, or can I make it horizontal? Um, I don't see why you couldn't make it horizontal. Okay. Um. Well, then, I w want to uh, use my guardian ring to open up a portal uh, underneath as many bad guys as I can. That's right around me. Okay, um, so the portal that opens up, um, just for logistics again, it's not going to be like this grand portal that can open up. I mean, these are literally just like walkways, you know, like for you all to travel in between places. So, I mean, I'm talking the biggest thing this opens up is uh, think of a doorway but like a double doorway. So like there's a doorway with another doorway beside it. That's about how big it's going to get. Okay. So, so you're going to be able to drop like four or five guys standing. We'll be able to fall through that. I, you know, I mean, they are kind of grouped together. That's pretty so you can, good though, right? Yeah. yeah. Can we just or use I, the rings to like use if I drop to get four or five, 50 feet behind them? I mean, you just like could, walk out yeah. the door. Yeah, we could do that. So we're all going to do it. Well, well, I mean, I mean like, I'm talking right about, now. like, not fighting them. Like, whoop, You're whoop. talking about, like, getting out of there. Yeah, I'm talking about running. Yeah. But we're going to have to get to the bottom of it sometime. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's a good idea. But, like, yeah, we could just, like, dip out of this room and then, like, go bring reinforcements. Yeah. That's true, too. Should we, like, imagine that town way back where? That's all we have to do, right? Waymoot. Think of a place we've already been. Yeah, so yeah Waymoot. You, you, know, you just have to think of a place you've been to, and then you can open the portal to that place. Do we know where this place is that we're at? No, but you can open a portal to Waymoot or to Blue Squid Village or somewhere that you've been. Can we open it to come back here? Well, no, what I'm talking about is like, yeah, like if we get to Waymoot and then like, yeah, where is it? And we're like, oh, um. Well, you've seen outside the building because you went out there to. Uh, you know, right. when those lizard folk came. So you got a good picture of at least the outside of that entrance. So you could open a portal back to the where that rubbled wall is um, where you guys went outside and came back in because you got a good look at that. So you could open the portal up to that. So you would be able to find your way back, yes. Okay. So do we want to do that? That's my vote. Uh, whatever y'all want to do. I want to keep fighting, but like... Well, do we think that like that's what we need to do is kill all of them, or do we think we need to like go to the, the town and like tell people like we found the source and blah blah blah, and like that's our objective? We my my concern is like that they're gonna dip, like they're gonna take the stuff and go put someplace else. So okay, I guess like I was thinking we could see how close we get to like killing these people, but. If I understand correctly, they're going to have, we're each going to have 30 attacks on, 
or 30 attacks are going to be split on us, right? <laughs> so we can't let it get to their turn, right? Basically. All right, so, so we, we run. Uh, dip. <laughs> okay. All right, so we I do a portal to Waymoot, like right in front of the group of bad guys and run through it. And run through and it. And run through it. And we're going to Waymoot to meet up with uh, Kaji. Uh, where's where's that guy? We can go talk to that that Kaji? guy that you like that I don't like. Yeah, Kaji's in Waymoot. Okay, yeah, so, that's what uh, I yeah yeah that's what I said. Yeah, just speed things up. So oh, I didn't. Yeah, hear Johnny, you. you you point your ring. Uh, it opens up the portal, and we're just gonna assume all three of you just run through that. Um, as it closes up, the the clash of thirty cultists just like stopping their tracks, like, <laughs> "Whoa, where is everybody?" <laughs> uh, and at that, you all three of you just appear uh, right in the middle of Waymoot. Um, as you all get back to the middle of Waymoot uh, using the ring, um, well, first of all, Johnny, uh, you start to feel a little bit of pain in your hand. Uh, just from using the ring. Uh, nothing too crazy, but just a little bit of pain. Um, but and now as you guys find yourself in the middle of Waymoot, things look a little bit different. Um, to the south side of town, all, a lot of the trees are just black. Uh. You see just some nastiness. Uh, to the west, you see some patches of blackness uh, in the trees as well. Um, you see there's a lot more of a hustle and bustle of people in town. Um, Kalane is here. You see her uh, speaking with Kaji, um, kind of directing people what to do. Uh, and you also see that group of uh, lizard folk. It seems that they have just arrived, actually. Okay, I don't know if we've talked about this, and maybe this is a bad idea, <laughs> but... Have you realized how similar, like, the names are? Like, Kalane and Talane? Talana. Talana. Oh. Okay, they're a little different, but they're kind of similar. They so are maybe similar. maybe they're, like, related. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's a terrible disguise. Yeah, maybe. Although, didn't, didn't we, like, do perceptions and, like, insights on her when we first met her? Because I was super... Yeah, you did. Yeah. She seems pretty straight up. Yeah, you did. Uh, and then all of a sudden you hear uh, Kaji say, oh, hey, well, well, look who it is. You guys just kind of appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, uh, Johnny, you talk to this guy. Yeah. You like him. <laughs> it's, it's been rough. Um, I think we figured, well, we figured something out. Uh, let's. Uh, and Ka Ka Kalane hears this, and she kind of perks up and begins to walk over as well. Uh, Kalane, how you, how you doing? You look nice. You know, Hello. Hi. Uh, so you you still figuring out uh, the stuff that you were figuring out? We're uh, whatever that was. Well, we we were we were also waiting for you. We didn't know where you all ended up, but as you can tell, things have uh. Things have gotten worse. Uh, yeah. A lot of the King's Forest uh, to the north and to the east and even to the west, a lot of the King's Forest, there's patches of just this blackness. It's killing off the forest. Uh, there's been reports of animals turning, and uh, things are just getting terrible. Uh, what did, did you all find anything out? We're still trying to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well, we were off doing things, um, you know, making decisions, jumping in at first without thinking. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Always. We. Uh, we found some things. Um, found a place where they're making this stuff. Um, and uh, I'm assuming I took one of the black files too. Yes, yeah, you all have some okay. files on Yeah, it. so I give her, I'm like, this is, this is the bad juju and this is the good juju. And, <laughs> um, See the difference? And uh, I'm like, I don't know if you got any, uh, you know, what, scientists? whatever i don't know uh who can she uh she she grabs these and she turns to uh one of the purple dragon guards that are with her um and she says uh she whispers something to him hands him both vials uh he puts them under his coat and he begins to head out of town and she says um we'll take this to we have we have some alchemists on hand to uh to study this so 
uh, thank you. This this might really help us. You said this is uh this is the stuff that's causing all this. No, I I, I think I said that the one was bad juju and one's good juju. <laughs> Uh, that's what I excuse said. Excuse me, bad juju, good juju. What does this mean? Re- uh, one's bad. <laughs> and so, what? like I said, that's causing this. Is that what this is? Look, I'm not an alchemist. I'm just <laughs> a simple bard, <laughs> pirate. Uh, well, it, well, rogue. whatever. Either way, we'll get this tested. We'll yeah. have them look this over, and I'm sure we can figure out the components of this stuff. Um, in, the, in the meantime, we've got some other things to figure yes. out. Our forest is turning black. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, okay, look, look. We've got some things to figure out as well, um, and that's how we're going to go uh, kill a bunch of cultists. Um, I, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to ask that uh, you come with, you bring some of these uh, purple dragon folk with you, with me, with us, and we go uh, eliminate uh, the people that started this. And uh, you'll also find some more of those uh, chemicals and whatever, and possibly some of those components uh, that made up what you're looking at. I can tell you the bad stuff. You don't want the components that it took to make that. Uh, so yeah, we're not, we're not interested in that. We're just interested in finding a cure for this. Yeah. Um, well, if you bring all your men with me, we'll get you that cure. Should we, and this is just between you all. Should we tell them about the, tree because that'll probably give some answers as to why all the other trees are doing yeah, what they're doing i think so so uh, um i i open like shake my hand and i open the portal to uh the tree like from the top level where we can we could see it and show her and i'm like look this is where it starts are you guys coming or not um, and Kalanay, uh looks in there, and you know she sees this, um, and she says, "Hmm." She says, "I recognize that tree." She says, "I wonder if the druid knows about this." There's a druid. She says, "Well, this may have just got a little bit more complicated, <laughs> but you don't say." I think I know someone who might be able to help us if it's if it's going if it's being spread through this tree. She says, uh, do you have two minutes for me to tell you something? No, <laughs> just kidding, yes. <laughs> Lay it on me. She said, well, all right, so the King's Forest is special. There's, there's five major trees that run through the King's Forest that the Druids believe give life to this forest. If they're targeting those trees, that means it's going to kill the life in all this forest and... This forest is what brings Cormier life, what brings, you know, our trade and our livelihood through this forest. And, well, if they're targeting these five trees, that's not good. She says, that tree you're showing me now was used to be protected by elven magic, but apparently something that went wrong. She says, well, I know that one of those trees, the one you just showed me, is not looking good. Ah, uh, we might need to check on the other four. If they're targeting trees, then we should probably cut them off at the other four. Well, it looks like the other four are already starting to spread. That's why we're getting blackness in here. Uh, I tell you what, if we can find Rawl and his druid... All right. Let's do that. Well, uh, a little, little further south, not too far from here. Hey, hey, Kaji. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I still remember where they're at. Uh, I mean, I could take us there. What what do you say, guys? Okay. Let's do it. This guy. Um, <laughs> I, you just don't like him. I Kaji. don't know why you don't like him. Because he doesn't do his job well. <laughs> He's a sweet, sweet boy. <laughs> doesn't change the fact that he's bad at what he does. So, you, you, I mean, we got to do what we got to do, you know? So. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, we don't want to be bad at what we Kalina- do. Kalinea turns to you, Johnny, um, and she says, that, that ring thing is pretty interesting. I tell you what, so you're saying this is where the cultists are at right now? Yeah, there's about 30 of them. I tickled half. Uh. <laughs> um, and she, she whistles, uh, and as she whistles, uh, one of her, her guardsmen comes up to her. He, she whispers something else to him, and he lets out a loud yell, uh, and a bunch of soldiers start heading your way. And she says, how about we send them a surprise? Yeah. Oh. Sounds uh, good. That's, I mean, you just surprised me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that. She, <laughs> said, she says, you, you go with Kaji, find the druids, figure out where the location of these trees are, and I'm sure you're going to find the source of this, or at least you'll be able to stop it from spreading. I'll send in my guys to this tree, and they'll take care of the problem there. Well, that's nice. Let's Can I that. sense motive real fast? Or like whatever that is? Uh, uh, oh. Perception? You what? I wanna, can I do like a perception? Or insight? Just make sure like she's telling the truth? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. All right, so insight 16. Okay, yeah, from what you can tell, um, you, you know, like, you know, shady talk being who you are mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but she seems to be telling the truth and she seems to seriously want to put an end to this okay all right um Let us hope so. then yeah i uh, i tell them all right yeah uh go for it um in there you'll you'll find a room uh down the, the hallway there's a room um with a bucket a big cauldron of this gold stuff the vials that we gave you be more of that. We poured some on the tree and it slowed it down. Um, if we can replicate this, then I say go for it, dumping all of that uh, golden liquid on the tree and see if it can't stop it completely and start healing the forest. Um, also, there's going to be a room in there with uh, some some lizard people who, who didn't make it. Uh, I want you guys to know that they were they're good people and uh, deserve all the respect. Understood. And she, she signals for her men to, uh, she asks you to hold the ring open and they're going to walk through the portal. I look at, I look at, uh, I look at Turk and I'm like, hey, my, uh, my hand kind of hurts. You want to pop off one of these bad boys and let them through? To? One of you two. <laughs> um, yeah, I can do it. Okay. Yeah, so you hold the ring open. Um, the, right, at, right now, there's about 20 of the purple dragon dudes who are lined up to go through. So, and I'm like, well, pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you hold it open. It takes them a little bit to get through. Um, but as about half of them are through, you hear the front half that had already gone through. You hear some like yelling already um, as they start to rush through now. And uh, Turk, as the uh, portal closes from having to hold it open for a couple minutes for them to all get through, same thing. Your hand is starting to hurt a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of a sharp pain going through your hand as well. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kalane looks at Kaji and says... Waste no time. Find the druids. Figure this out. I'll stay here and continue reporting back to the queen. And Kaji says, sure, sure thing. Yeah, we got this. We got this. All right, guys, uh, follow me. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's get this done. 